Today is July 22nd, 2016, and this is the ADM Investor Services Weekly Market Wrap-Up. Our guests today are Steve Freed, Vice President of Grain Research at ADM Investor Services, and Alan Bush, the Senior Financial Economist of ADMIS. Please remember that the views and opinions expressed here today are solely the views and opinions of our guests and should not be construed as the views or opinions of ADM Investor Services or Archer Daniels Midland Company. Steve, let's start today with the grain markets. Nearby, nearby soybean futures broke below $10 this week. Why did this happen and is the bull market in beans over? I would think that um, first of all it happened because the weather maps look pretty favorable uh, over the next three to four weeks. A month ago corn prices broke because the corn crop weather looked good and uh, now it looks like the, the good weather is going to extend at least into the first week of August. So those who bought like the La Nina story that, that we were going to have some drought conditions this year are exiting the marketplace. Um, so yes I think the rally's over. Uh, we've got too many longs in the marketplace. Um, at our conference uh, earlier this year in January, we had one of our consultants say we were going to see eight dollar futures by the fall if we had good weather. And so now we're we're going to try to find a price that shows a better supply. And some talk this week regarding the possibility of China selling domestically crushed soybeans from the reserve. If true, how will this impact soybean prices? Well, no one really knew how China was going to do their reserve program. And up until now, the soybeans they're selling out of their stocks has been food beans. But there was rumors this week that the government would sell good beans to the crushers, maybe as much as 3.5 million tons. So if they were to do that, that would lower their imports by 120 million bushels and maybe lower our export demand by a similar amount. If you add that to the carryout, that's going to add to the weakness in the soybean market. Some analysts are now beginning to talk about the 2016 U.S. corn and bean yields, feeling that they may come in above estimates. What do you think about this? Further pressure, perhaps? This week um, was the first week that people that model yield based on crop ratings put together a corn yield based on the current crop ratings. USDA is using a 168 yield. They came out at 171, and one group even came out at 174. So without a weather problem, you're going to be looking at a very big corn carry out, a very big crop, and, and that's going to push prices lower. The same model suggests a 48 soybean yield, which add, would add another 100 million bushels to the carry out if we achieve that versus the current government numbers. So by USDA warns people not to use crop ratings in modeling, but for those who do, this week they came out with higher yields than what the USDA is using. A lot of heat out there right now. Uh, is this a uh good for the crop? I mean, do we have a greenhouse effect or is this going to stress the crops? The heat's only going to last four days. So the duration of it is not enough to hurt the crops. In, in 2010, you had two weeks where temperatures at night, which are most important, didn't get below 70 degrees and the yields came out much lower than the market had anticipated. So this is a short-lived, hot duration. It looks like the ridge is going to stay down in the southern plains. So there'll be some rains firing up over the north and east side of the ridge and temperatures should, starting next week, Get back to normal. So I don't think the duration was long enough to hurt the crops. One final grain question. U.S. soft wheat prices are lower than in the European Union. Would this help export demand and U.S. prices? I don't think it will because we just have too much wheat in Russia and we have a potential record Canada crop. But I think it's the first time since 2015 that our soft wheat prices have been below Europe. Uh, Europe's had just too much rain and, and they've low, their crop is only rated 42 percent good to excellent. So right now, if there wasn't the Russian wheat, if there wasn't the Canadian wheat available, we might get some business, and USDA is looking for soft wheat exports to be higher than a year ago, but it's not a game changer. It's not something that's going to add to the price of wheat. And let's flip over to the gold market. Earlier this month, gold futures advanced to over 1377 an ounce due to a combination of renewed inflation fears and a flight to quality in light of the Brexit situation. With gold selling off over the past three weeks, what is your outlook for gold futures now? Okay, well, first of all, we did have two major influences helping the gold market. That was the Brexit and the inflation situation, which is, I believe, going to become a problem somewhere down the road. But now the, the Brexit is less of an influence, and the price of gold set back as flight to quality longs were liquidated. That leaves us with the inflation influence which is going to be around for a very, very long time. 
Inflation is gradually going to increase and accelerate. So that is really all we need to sustain a bull market in gold futures. So this is just the very beginning of a, a massive bull market for the precious metals, both gold and silver. So any breaks down to the 1310, 1320 area should be used as a buying opportunity for the gold market. There is a lot left to the upside. And the dollar has broken out of a month-long congestion pattern to the upside. Can the greenback continue to strengthen? Uh, absolutely. Well, first of all, the rule of thumb on any uh, congestion pattern is that prices break out of the congestion pattern in the direction that they came into the pattern. So we came in from uh, lower levels advancing, and now earlier in the week we did break out to the upside. And that probability is about 60 to 65 percent using that rule. So the, that rule did work. It, uh, it uh, came into play and the dollar did advance. Now there is more to the upside as the Fed remains the only major central bank that we believe is likely to raise interest rates uh, possibly next year. All of the other major central banks are in a position where they cannot raise rates and most likely they are going to actually ease credit conditions. So from an interest rate differential point of view, the dollar is the, the beneficiary and the, the U.S. dollar is likely to continue mm -hmm. to advance I would say all this year, probably well into next year. Steve, the U.S. dollar continues to move higher. Crude has trended lower. Equities have moved higher. Funds are now short corn and have a record short wheat position. Funds are still long soybeans and soy meal. Is money moving away from commodities? Is this due to Brexit and concern about the global economy and commodity demand? Well, I think in the grain markets, oh. traders um, every day come in they look to see what direction the dollar is going. They look to see what direction energy is going. And, and they're looking at the direction of, of the stock market. And so all this kind of comes into play that, you know, maybe it's time to get out of your commodity long. And so uh, we're seeing not only weather, which is the number one thing that we trade, as being negative, but now this money flow is also adding to the weakness in the marketplace. So I think whether it's re-exit that started it, whether it's concerned about the Chinese economy, whether it's concerned about global economy, it seems that commodity prices are, are losing some of its bullishness. And finally, Alan, this week the S&P 500 and Dow futures advanced to new highs for the year. What's the outlook for stock index futures now? Okay, well, as interest rates remain low, even though the Fed may raise rates next year, other central banks, such as the Bank of England and the Bank of Japan, are likely to ease credit conditions at the uh, policy meetings that are uh, coming up over the next several days in one instance and in August uh, for the Bank of England. So with interest rates remaining very low, that is the fuel that will take stock index futures higher. I would think all through the balance of this year and probably well into next year. Now as far as the chart objective, I have no chart objectives, but I do have a time objective that is well into next year, maybe even beyond before we top out in the indices. So continue to buy breaks in all of the major indices. There is a lot left to the upside. Please remember that the views and opinions expressed here today are solely the views and opinions of our guests and should not be construed as the views or opinions of ADM Investor Services or Archer Daniels Midland Company. If you have questions about ADM Investor Services or would like, like to learn more about our brokerage services, please visit www.admis.com.